Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Chip. And we're here after a long holiday and a long weekend, so uh, it should be interesting. Um, but today is a sad day in Fall River, uh, and even our local newspaper couldn't even cover this story. Um, but I had to drive around the city to confirm it this morning. Uh, looks like uh, Engine 7 and Engine 3 have been laid off. They are not at their homes, at their stations at Central and Flint. Uh, and this is going to be a huge uh, blow to our manpower and their ability to do their job. Uh, we're now down to 175 firefighters, and you know we've lost approximately 40 firefighters, uh, according to the administration. Uh, but you know we have to say, why are we doing this? You know why? Because this mayor, for four years, prepared nothing. He failed to present anything in preparing for this issue, and I think that that in and of itself is a poor, poor, poor show of management skills. I don't know, Chip. I mean, you must be frustrated. Yeah, it is. It's extremely difficult to, uh, to, especially in light of the fact that there's been, number one, no preparation, as you said, CJ. But what's what uh, is even worse is the fact that um, there doesn't seem to be any regard for any kind of control in spending and prioritizing safety, be it police or fire. Uh, he had four years of, of federal money. And those four years were, uh, that money was given with the expressed reason to find money somewhere in the budget to continue the funding for the positions that the federal money was given to us for. And nothing was done. As a matter of fact, we lost even more positions because this mayor uh, loves to have $9,000 doors put on the law department, loves to have... Uh, $5,000 repairs on a shower and give pay raises to all his friends while the essential services, and we've said it time and time again on this show, uh, they're gone. And today is a sad day. We've lost two more engine companies. And although 175 is better than 153, the fact is that when we lose companies uh, in, in areas of the city, it has a domino effect. Uh, because firefighting is based on, on, a, on a rapid, aggressive attack to protect property and lives. You need a finite number of men in order to initiate an attack. You can't get there with three people and wait for more people to come because the first five minutes of a fire, first ten minutes of a fire, uh, is the most critical. And if you don't have enough manpower to do all the phases of an operation to control that fire, when you do it piecemeal, there's going to be more property damage. There's going to be more hazard to life. Um, it's going to be, a, there's, there's, it's problematic. The fact is that not only did they not prepare for this, even now by going to 175, there doesn't seem to be a plan to consolidate companies to, to build new stations where they can overlap and get adequate running time. Uh, it's, it's too little, too late, and I want to let everybody know that numbers alone don't make it better. The fact that we're not at 153 and 175, it's kind of like saying gas is going to go up to $5, and when it only goes up to 4 everybody's happy. It's not, it doesn't work that way. The, the, what, what's going on in this city is truly, truly creating a public hazard. Yeah, and, you know, when I spoke with uh, union representatives about the situation, you know, they said they weren't happy about what they got. Um, and they were in no way happy that they had to lay off firefighters. But at this point, they're doing the best they can with what little they have and what, what little they're being given. And that says something about a mayor who says, public safety is number one. Public safety is the most important thing for me. Because if public safety was the most important thing for you, Mr. Mayor, there'd be 250 firefighters on the, on the job. There wouldn't be 175, and you'd find the money. Take it, away from, take it away from a couple of the corporate councils. Lay them off. Why don't you lay off a few of them? Why don't you lay off a few people that have been given jobs that, are, that have doubled their salaries in the past year? 
I may sound hateful. I may say, you know, oh, you know, you have nothing good to say. But you know what? It's not that I have nothing good to say. It's that I can't find anything good to say about it. This is a bad situation. And this budget passed, 7 to 1, and everyone thought, oh, we're not going to be 112 at least, blah, blah, blah. You know what? We might have done better at 112. At least people would have started smartening up. Because what's going to happen is, come next January, come February, and come March, we're all going to start hearing the murmurings about, we're going to need to cut the budget again, we're going to need to cut people off, we're going to have to, but you'll see in January, February, and March that all the mayor's cronies are going to get raises. And remember, it's an election year next year for, for our city council, our mayor, and our school committee. So we're not going to raise taxes, we're not going to raise water rates, we're not going to raise pay-as-you-throw bag rates, we're not going to do any of that because it's an election year and we all got to protect our jobs. But the day after that November election, all those fees seem to go up automatically. And that's kind of sad. But that's Fall River. Fall River at its best, and you create it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we, we, have to change, we have to change the way we do business for this city. This city is continually deteriorated. Uh, we see services getting uh, less and less. Uh, we see essential services. Uh, being put last on our priority list, uh, we can't do business this way. We can't, you can't do business with this in your house. And what the city council and this mayor forgets is this city is our home. You know, we live in this. We're tenants here. And we have to run our budget like we run it at home. We can't not put away money to pay your lights, your electricity, we can't put away money not to pay your heat because you're going to freeze to death in the winter. We have to prioritize why a mayor and a city council can't figure this out and they try to make this, 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 this euphemistic argument that, oh, you don't understand, city government's different. No, it isn't. City government can't deficit spend. You can't deficit spend. I can't deficit spend. I have to balance my budget, and I have to make sure I have money to pay for the essentials. Otherwise, I'll be living in a cardboard box under one of the overpasses. Which is a fire hazard, by the way. We don't have the firemen to take care of it. But, you know, Gandhi said it well. He says, you know, if you want change, be the change. And, you know, that's the problem. We all keep saying we want change, but none of us are willing to be the change. And that's, that's where the problem starts. If you want change, you've got to be the change. And I think, that, I think that's going to happen very shortly, and I, I hope it does. Uh, but now over to another fiasco of ep pro pro proportions. Um, how many went to the July 5th fireworks display, I have to ask? You know, the Herald News touted it as a wow event. Yeah, it was a wow event for the people on the battleship, which you paid $5 to get on. Um, but for the rest of the people, I'm not sure about how much of a wow event it was. I know that the whole area is under construction, which is what we want. We did ask for that because we're taking down those spaghetti ramps and, you know, we're going to build a eight lane or four lane or whatever boulevard, uh, which is going to attract more business, you know, the economic disaster again. Um, but that left no room for parking and no room for people to get down to the waterfront to watch the fireworks. So there were some people who actually you know, improvised. And it was a wonderful show of imp improvisation. Um, right here at the studio, one of our uh, staff here, uh, she took her and her family to North Park. And they sat on the hills and they watched the fireworks. They said the trees could have been a little shorter, but they got to see them and they were pretty good, they said. Uh, and they also got to see them from other communities. People from my church actually went over to the Holy Union Sisters home on Rock Street and they sat between the garage and the residents, and they looked right down onto the Taunton River. But is that what we want? We want to improvise, you know, improvise our holiday celebrations? I, I know that hurricane, tropical storm, whatever you want to call it, Arthur, kind of ruined the fourth um, for a lot of people. You know, ruined it for me. I still had my cookout. Those are the best T-bones I had in a long time. <laughs> um, but nobody took any planning. And this planning also transitions its way through every single department in the city. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why can't we plan these things? 
who, who thinks of this stuff and says, okay, we're just going to leave it there because that's where it's always going to be. We've got to make some, you know, accommodations for people. People who are handicapped didn't exactly have a lot of accommodations made for them for down at the Battleship Cove or Heritage State Park because of all this construction. But nobody's going to say anything about it. Some people went on to Facebook and the Herald News and started complaining that, you know, we're laying off firefighters, we're implementing pages you throw, and, but we're still getting the fireworks. And people miss the fact that, in all technicality, the city doesn't pay for the fireworks. They pay for all the ancillary services, but they don't pay for the fireworks. They pay for the police, they pay for the fire, they pay for the traffic control, um, but they don't pay for the fireworks. Those are paid for by local businesses. And for that, I want to thank the local businesses. It's very interesting to see how a community can come together. Now on to our next issue of the day. Uh, excuse me, Department of Community Maintenance. Can we get the story straight? I mean, I have to ask this question. Who's right? We've been hearing all along that we're going to give this a couple of weeks to take effect before we start going out and knocking on doors. Now, I listened to Ken Pacheco specifically say that enforcement is now going to begin immediately. On Monday, when they go out, Monday, August 4th, if there are people who are scofflaws, who people who did not put that uh, trash in the proper bag, in the proper receptacle, on Tuesday, people are going to come, you made a mistake. And they're going to try to educate them. Now, if the person who lives there refuses to be educated, those same people are going to go out and go, Mr. Landlord, go educate your tenant. And after that, it's Mr. Landlord, here's a $300 fine. I love this. And the worst part about it is somebody sent a, uh, a letter to the editor, to the Herald News, and asked, can you answer me a few questions? And I want to hear this too. With all of this work on um, the environment and working on the environment and being very accommodating to the environment, obviously my co-host has an important phone call. <laughs> um, but the majority of people are going to buy bags and then put them inside these flimsy purple people eaters. I don't know what to call them yet. Uh, they're purple bags and they have the big city seal on them, but they're gonna take a hefty bag and put it inside one of these 30 gallon or 33 gallon or whatever it may be bags. And so now you got two pieces of plastic that are gonna get thrown out and the, the plastic doesn't you know, fall apart very rapidly. And also, so you know, this isn't a force flex bag this is a flimsy, if you hold it up to the, the, the Herald News, you can read it, um, plastic bag. And it's only there to say we're using the pay as you throw bags. Um, so there's a question. How are we going to do that? So how are we in protecting the environment in any way, shape, or form? And another question, and this one goes out to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, basically, Waste Zero, which is the company which is producing the bags for the city of Fall River is making 30 cents or so on each bag. How come Fall River couldn't have their own bags printed and produced and do the same thing? Th would that make too much sense? I mean, Chip, I mean, am I making any sense here? Are these questions valid? I mean... Well, well they are yeah, valid, yeah. <laughs> but then we have to realize who we're dealing with. We're dealing with the city of Fall River. If we tried to produce the bags, it would probably cost us 30 cents a bag we wouldn't make 30 cents a bag <laughs> because we'd hire so many people and give them so many pay raises that they would that we'd lose money on the deal but you know the f the fact is that you know it's the fourth of july everybody's been hunkered down watching legal or illegal fireworks uh you know news has been fairly slow but we have all these things that are that are there they're presented and i want to get back to See, they talked about the eight-lane highway they're building down, down there. Well, the last eight-lane thoroughfare I was on um, was in Detroit, and we all know how good Detroit's doing. So eight lanes of traffic, four lanes in either direction, does not a economy make. But 
I want to remind everybody, you know, it's been a slow news week because of the 4th of July holiday. And let's remember what we're celebrating here. We're celebrating Independence Day. Independence from a government that was overtaxing us and we had no representation. Wow, that did sounds any, familiar. Did anybody, did an, does anybody remember the fact that this nation was created because what was being done to the colonists at the time is basically what's being done to the taxpayers of Fall River. So they took over, they took, they took it into their own hands, and they got rid of the government. And as a matter of fact, it's still there. It still says that when the government doesn't work, we're supposed to get rid of it. We're supposed to replace it with something that does work for the people, not for businesses, not for the mayor, not for the law department, not for political cronies, but for the people. It is time to get rid of everybody in those seats, and it's up to us. We can't blame them. If they can make a living and get a good deal because we allow them to stay in those nice cushy seats, stick their heads in those very deep troughs, and take all our money, make our lives miserable, it's our fault. And let's remember what created this nation. People got fed up with taxation without representation. And when we sat in that city council chamber and saw people flip on this budget, that's exactly what we have been left with. Taxation without representation. And be it in the form of bags, be they plastic bags or tea bags, that's what we have. Taxation without representation. So join CJ and I in this next election and get a giant broom and push every single person out who doesn't get it because it's time to change. I think King George just took a bounty out on your head. <laughs> you know, it's, it, you have to sit there and you have to wonder, you know, there's 44,000 people in Fall River who are registered to vote. There are 89, 88, 89,000 people who live here. So 45,000 people could care less about what happens. There's the first thing. Or they really can't care about what happens or say what happens because they can't vote uh, because they're not citizens or some other issue. But when you have 44,000 people who are registered to vote and less than one quarter of them, less than 10,000 people, <laughs> 11,000 people, turn out to vote. And when 12,000 people turn out to vote, the sixth floor election office starts jumping up and down. Yay, we had a good year. You have to say, this is sad. This is really, really sad. And we could do so much more. You know, have you been thinking out there, you know, I could do such a better job? How many times I've heard people say, I can do such a better job? And they've run. And they don't even make it through the primary, so they give up. Hey, I ran a couple of times. And I always made it through the primary. But you know why I made it through the primary? Because I was a sneak. <laughs> I did the political sneaky thing. I ran as a Republican. But here's the problem with doing that. Nobody likes Republicans in Fall River. Why? I don't know. But they don't like them. But I at least had a place to say what needed to be said from the people of Fall River. And people listened to me because I was a candidate and for no other reason. So sometimes when you run for office, you have to say, why am I running? And if you run, you turn around and you say, win or lose, I'm going to make sure they know what needs to change in the city. And we have a lot of things which need to change in the city. And you can tout that Massachusetts is now the bioethical, biomechanical. We are going to support all these bioengineering companies, and it's going to happen. But if Fall River doesn't have the educational level to support such an industry, it's not coming here. You wonder why your children and grandchildren no longer live in Fall River or maybe even Massachusetts? 
It's because our politicians can't get off, off their backside because doing so undermines their authority, their power, and their checkbook. And you can't do that. They want to keep us dumb, poor, and stupid to all the issues. And then they have control. Because every time I raise the taxes, you pay it. Every time I raise the water fee, you pay it. Do you realize you had three, three water fee raises in one year? And they were called different things. Now, I was told when they did the base water base meter fee, that was always in the fee before. Now it's a separate item. Well, it's a separate item, but the water fee never went down when they removed it. The water bill didn't go down. It actually went up. And now they've raised the water fee itself. How many times are we going to get hit with those? How many times are the people forward going to say, oh, well, you got to pay it? Well, you know what? Detroit went through this. And Detroit's going through it right now. And do you know that currently in Detroit, there are 12,000 homes which don't have water? They don't have water. Detroit went out and shut them off. And they plan on shutting a lot more off. And Detroit says, it's not our problem that you can't pay our water rates. You have to pay them. And now you have groups coming out saying that having water is a basic human right. Yeah, well, having water is a basic human right. But when the government turns around and says, it's got to meet this, this requirement for your health and safety, somebody's got to pay for that. So you have to pay for that. And they've done that in Detroit. Detroit's trying to pull itself up, not even by bootstrap, by threads. And that's what it's going to take for Fall River to smarten up. It's going to be hard to make this city change. But you know what? If you want change, you be the change. You create the change, and you work on the change, and the change will happen. I think that's interesting. Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, we're, we're hitting some very, very important points here, I think, because, you know, we are the agents of change. We have to do this. I'll remind you, you talked about the Republicans, and look, let's face it, uh, philosophically, a lot of the Republicans uh, that are around today, I don't agree with. Neither I, do I. But I don't agree with a lot of the Democrats either. <laughs> Same I've, here. <laughs> I've been an independent most of my life, but I will remind people because people just don't pay attention. And that's one of the problems. They bury their head in the sand and they don't pay attention. I'll remind you that two of the greatest presidents in this nation's history, Abraham Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt, who, by the way, all the Republicans today, they say are anti-environment, uh, Theodore Roosevelt established the National Park System. Uh, two of our greatest presidents uh, were Republicans. So you're not automatically no good because you're a Republican. You're not automatically good because you're a Democrat. I will remind you all, on a local level, the people who are complaining about the health care issues in Fall River, that our Democratic House and Senate change the law to screw you on your health care. They're the people who did it. Our Democratic legislature, especially uh, the Fall River delegation and our senator, was adamantly opposed to increasing the minimum wage. He wanted to keep it down because many of these people are Dinos. And in case you don't know what that acronym stands for, it means Democrat in name only because they're not concerned about pay raises because unlike you and I, who have to go out and try to negotiate a pay raise and have to listen to how badly the this, this city was in fiscally, Many, many years ago, they had what they, were call, they called a Halloween massacre in the State House. The, the uh, legislature stayed in session and voted themselves a huge pay raise. And the people in the state went absolutely bonkers over it. They all feared for their job. And guess what they did? They figured out a way to give themselves a pay raise and never have to do it again because before they actually had to vote for their pay raise and we knew they got a pay raise. 
So what they did was they changed the law so now they get automatic cost of living raises every year. They'll never again have to go and approve a pay raise for themselves because they get it automatically. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing? Wouldn't we all love that everywhere we worked? You know, and we allowed it to happen. They're still doing it. And when they come down here and say they care about your plight, remind them, ask them, repeal it. Let, let's put your pay raises on the ballot. You know, it's interesting because they get these automatic cost of living increases, which take into account everything. And as many of our viewers know who are on Social Security or even a state pension, your cost of living increase isn't even a cost of living increase. It's a big joke. And they remove from the Social Security system gas, utilities, and food costs. So what's left of the cost of living increase? I mean, and that's why you get a raise of between 1% and 2%. You never see much more than that on Social Security. And even with state pensions, it's capped at $12,000. Yeah. You get the maximum you're going to get in Fall River, some communities have a little higher, it's $12,000. So if you, get the, if you get it, it's $360 a year. That's less than a dollar a day. Right. So it's like, forget it. After taxes, you're making a half a buck. Dollar so, a day, you can't even buy a coffee yeah, with that. <laughs> half a buck. You can't even, you know, you can barely buy... You know, that's what, that's what penny candy costs today, 50 cents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, let, don't let these con, con artists tell you they're working in your best interests. Hold their feet to the fire. Yeah, the only, the only time a politician works for your best interest is when that best interest is his best interest, and we know that. Well, thank you for watching today. It's been great being here. It's, as, as we said, it's a slow week, but you know what? We made it anyways, and I'm glad you made it to watch us. Have a great day, and we'll see you again later on this week. Let us celebrate the 4th of July by taking back our city like we took our nation. Let's have a pay-as-you-throw tea party. <laughs>